بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our studies of فوتي حديث we continue our discussion about the hadith that mentioned following our whims or lusts or lower desires and having tulul amal unrealistic wishes as two frightening or most frightening things the next chapter we already had some discussion so we are in the middle of the hadith the next chapter is about the number of these whims or lower desires and Imam Khomeini says that there are different types of them different ranks and sometimes they are so uh, delicate and so subtle that even the person himself or herself may not be able to identify that this desire that I have is not good it's not virtuous it is a lower desire shaitan's plots and also our own nafs amare decoration and beautification can make us unaware of these problems and what is common between all these types is that they block our way our journey towards haq towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, although they can be different in ranks but this is a common element between all types of them then he lists uh, different types of Hawaiian apps or lower desires for different groups of people for example there are people who may worship idols or may go for um, idols from gold money this type of things maybe not literally they are idol worshippers uh, but somehow they have taken these things as their own God and Lord in Surah Jathia verse 23 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Afara'ayta man ittakhada ilahahu hawa uh, and there are other verses Imam Khomeini applies this verse to this case that sometimes people uh, are um, suffering more obvious kind of following desires like these cases sometimes it's a matter of following their own desires and false ideas of shaitan with respect to other false aqa'id not only tawheed but for example when it comes to uh, other principles of faith or differences between different uh, schools of the same religion or even within the same school the same madhab if there are different opinions sometimes it's not because of their scientific uh, scholarly di discovery it's possible it can be because of their own wishes and desires and selfishness they follow certain types of trends or attitudes or adopt certain doctrines 
or some vicious traits of character. The next, he mentions people who commit sins. So Aqaid and Akhlaq was the second one. The third is about Ma'asi, about sins. It can be major sins or minor sins, but all of them, of course, are to be avoided. And as we have said in some other lectures, uh, every sin is major if you consider whom is disobeyed. When someone disobeys Allah, that's major sin. Yes, these sins compared with each other, some of them are greater than the others. But even minor sins are major in a sense. For he mentions, and this is what many need to be very much aware of. Uh, even if we manage to have a proper aqaid and inshallah akhlaq, which of course uh, we shouldn't take it for granted, but suppose we have them, suppose we don't commit sins inshallah, but this number four is not easy. Because he says, this is when you follow your desires in those things which are mubah, which are permissible. And you spend your time and attention on these things which are mubah. This is very... <laughs> very delicate case and this is where to find the balance is very uh, difficult suppose for example something like watching movies okay if these movies are not involving any haram and would not have bad impact on, on me in my aqaid or akhlaq or action but still they take some of my time maybe it is mubah but how much are you going to spend time on this how much we should spend time on entertainments we certainly need some time for uh, entertainment but there should be a limit for it you should not just say because it is halal i do it as much as i like it's not more than food food not only is halal it's halal to eat of course halal food it's even needed for our health but is it okay that i spend too much time on eating or i eat too much or i spend too much money on eating every day i spend few hours on eating or cooking just because i enjoy maybe every now and then maybe occasionally maybe sometime i invite you know people i want to make good food for them i spend you know a few hours maybe half a day maybe we have a majlis i spend one day maybe but not that i spend too much time on this just because i enjoy i'm not saying it's totally to be a stop but i'm saying you should watch it as you watch your food you watch your drink you should also watch the time and more than time the energy that you spend on halal lazza let me read for you what he says ahle mutaba'at hawa'i nafs در مشتهیات نفسانیه مباحه 
those who follow winds of nafs in those things that nafs wants which are mubah وصرف همت و کسرت اشتغال به آن they spend their energy on this and they are frequently engaged with this نوع دیگر از راه حقیقت باز مانند these are also stopped from pursuing حق and حقیقت the truth not like those who sin not like those who have bad aqaid not like those who worship idols or money or gold but these are also stopped this is very uh, much concerning me and not because I don't have concern about previous ones uh, I'm worried about all of them but this particularly is very much concerning because there is a chance that we may not notice it. We may not pay attention to this and spend lots of time and energy on these things. And actually, sometimes these things also start with Havdal and Mubah, but then little by little, uh, you need more excitement or you, know, you want to experience new things then it may take you to the borders and boundaries and maybe even if you are not careful you end up with doing haram so this is something that we have to really work on it then the fifth group ahle manasik wa ita'at suriya suriya with sab those who are people of rituals and formal ibadah for developing their house in akhira and enjoying pleasures of heaven or avoiding pain of hell but the main focus of them is pleasure and pain still and when it comes to pleasure of course it's a kind of physical pleasure not that they are interested in intellectual pleasures of heaven not that they are for example interested in being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being in company of the Prophet no they are more concerned about foods and fruits and drinks and other types of pleasures which are more kind of you can say uh, similar to the physical pleasures that we have in dunya I'm not saying the pleasures of heaven are physical but for us they remind us of the physical pleasure that we have in dunya when we eat something delicious or drink something which is nice and other types of uh, pleasures so Imam Khomeini says these people are also somehow mahjub they are uh, somehow uh, denied access to the truth and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mahjub means someone who is covered someone who has a veil and hijab before him and haq then he goes on further and he says even those who are involved in purification of the soul and have ascetic life and they undertake lots of spiritual exercises they reduce their food they reduce their sleep they are very much trying to not to do anything uh, materialistic as much as possible for example but they may be wishing and desiring to have 
power of the soul. If you remember in discussions about Islamic spirituality, sometimes I quote this actually frequently because I very much love this point by the late Ayatollah Ansari Hamadani. He says that in Islam we are not interested in strengthening the soul. We are interested in purification of the soul. Some people go for a spirituality because they want to have extraordinary power. They want to have a special dreams. They want to read people's mind. They want to be uh, healing, for example, ill people. They want to do all these wonderful <laughs> and, you know, extraordinary things in their, of course, opinion. Because some of these things may not be actually very wonderful. Uh, but they think these are wonderful things and, you know, would be very exciting, very interesting. But in Islam, we are not after these things. They may come in you, uh, your journey. They may not come. Even if they come, they are side products and they should not draw your attention away. Even sometimes, ulama say that a person in a higher position may not have any of these experiences. So, Imam Khomeini says, sometimes Hawaii nafs can even happen for those who are trying to work on their spirituality and have even ascetic life. The next group, he says, Ahl Ma'arif و سلوک و جذبات و مقامات عارفین even people of معارف those who are really interested in learning and understanding beautiful points about Allah and the relation with Allah they are people of سلوک ویفیرنگ and جذبات attractions and مقامات عارفین stations of the mystics که نظری جز لقاء حق و وصول به مقام قرب ندارند they don't have any interest except in meeting Allah and reaching nearness still these people can suffer هوای نفس no, نیز نوعی دیگر محجوب از حق و از تجلیات خاص محرومند Still, these people can have some blockage, some whale. Why? Because still they may see themselves. There might be still traces of self, of ego. And then he says, after this, there are other ranks <laughs> that are not... Uh, suitable for this discussion so this shows that no one should feel that i don't need to bother about this issue i have already uh, passed these stages no everyone no matter in which station you are you have lots of things to worry about and also we should be careful not to think we are in a higher stage while still we are dealing with lots of problems at a basic level. So he says, every person in these ranks should investigate himself or herself and keep himself or herself clear from these, type of, these types of desires so that they would not go astray. And the gates of mercy and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are uh, to be kept open and we should seek his mercy and guidance. He is the one who guides and gives tawfiq. So we should be honestly trying, working, doing our best and asking him for guidance and inshallah he will help us. After talking about Hawaii nafs, now we go to the second part of this hadith about um, 
Tulul Amal. The first chapter is about the problem of forgetting Akhirah because Tulul Amal Yunsel Akhirah. It makes you forget Akhirah. He says, You must know that the first station of the stations of humanity, or he says, Ensaniyat, is what mystics have said to be also the first station of wayfaring is yaqdi awakeness we have talked about it in uh, some lectures on spirituality some say it's a station one some say it's zero because before that we don't have any movement movement starts when we are awake and then he says Human beings, before they realize that they are traveling and they need to have destination and they need to work hard for collecting provision and whatever they need, like good companions, good guide for their journey, unless they become aware of all these things and work for all these things, they cannot succeed. They would not actually have will and determination to carry on with this journey. And he says one of the great obstacles, one of the great obstacles of awakeness, which causes forgetfulness and kills our determination, is to think that we have plenty of time. If I don't travel today, I can travel tomorrow. If not this month, next month. This delay and postponing is one of the greatest obstacles. He says, may God forbid that a person who has a long journey with lots of dangers and with limited time and needs lots of equipments and provision, he has nothing and he forgets that he has to travel. Khuda nakunat ke insan سفر دور و دراز پرخطری در پیش داشته باشد May God not bring this May God forbid that a person has long and dangerous journey و وقت او تنگ باشد and his time is very limited و عده و عده برای او خیلی لازم باشد He needs lots of things to carry to collect, to take with him و هیچ نداشته باش and he has nothing و با همه وصف از یاد اصل مقصد بیرون روان and with all these issues he totally forgets about journey so if he forgets then he would not prepare then the next chapter is he says in our journey, we need more than anything else, of course, after Aqaid and all that sort of things, we need two things. Amal Saleh, Ilm Righteous deed and beneficial knowledge. We very much need these two. He says, the provisions that you need for your journey is mostly related to these two. Ma'unaya on alam ruya in dumatlab charch mizana means whatever you need in that journey in that world hereafter very much goes around these two righteous deeds and beneficial knowledge. First of all, we don't have that much deeds. 
honestly, we don't have that much deeds. And even those little deeds that we have, he says, we don't know they were sincere. And maybe there were thousands, hezaran, thousands of obstacles for their acceptability. Who can say my salat is accepted? Who can say even one salat of me was accepted? My fasting is or was accepted. When Ibrahim and Ismail, these two true servants of Allah, who were asked to restore Kaaba, and under Allah's command they are restoring the house of Allah when they are concerned about acceptability of their action and say so we cannot be sure that our any of our action actions would be accepted so Amal Saleh, very little, if any. <laughs> Even we are not sure we have any. Ilm Nafi' Beneficial knowledge. Maybe we have some knowledge, not that much. But is it beneficial? If it is beneficial, the first person to benefit should be myself. And people who are in touch with me. He says, this is very worrying. He says, Agar in il wa amalema na fabud Dharma kisal ha ye salas dumbal on hastim baya taasir wa zahidashta basha. If our knowledge and action were good and beneficial, they should have had manifest impact on us because many years we are involved in these things and our akhlaq must have changed what is that that after 40 50 years of learning and acting still our hearts are Hard. And in particular, he says, "As namaz ke mi'raj mu'minan ast, mara che hasil shud." This is something that every person should sit and think about. Salat is mi'raj al-mu'min, is the ascension of mu'min. I should be able to see the impact of my a'mal and my knowledge in my salat, as we have said in some uh, lectures on salat, that your salat is your best action. So the result of your life should be seen in your salat. If in my salat I don't feel connection, I don't have that softness of the heart presence of the heart that peace it means that then I have not achieved may Allah inshallah help us all especially help me to realize that how important is Salat and how Salat is like a test a laboratory to see what we do in the rest of the day and in the rest of activities that we have. Quran says, Innama yakshallaha min ibadihi al-ulama. Where is that khashya? And he says, if God forbids, in this condition they move us to the other world, what great loss would be 
for us. He says, then you realize why Amirul Mu'min is so worried about us having tulul amal. Because they know the danger of this journey. He says, look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Although he is a messenger, he is ma'soom, but how much he was conscious of this journey. He says he was so much thinking about his journey that when he was reading Quran, when he was worshipping, he was losing somehow his kind of normal condition. Like a person who is in front of, or not like exactly, a person who is in front of his beloved, doesn't know what to do, what to say, how to show, even maybe he was not thinking of showing anything, you know, just naturally showing his humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that Rasulullah sometimes when he was reciting the Quran, not only he was standing, but he was also standing on his toes. Of course, we don't recommend people to do this, but this was something that was happening naturally. You know, uh, it's as if he wanted to fly and wanted to have the least of connection to the earth, but not something which was like, you know, forced on him. You know, if we do it by force, we may become ill and also we may uh, suffer from other spiritual problems. But this was natural and by joy. To the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, Taha ma anzalna alayka al Qur'ana la tashqa. We have not sent the Qur'an to you so that you suffer. There is a hadith from Imam Baqir and Imam Sadiq السلام, in Tafsir Ali ibn Ibrahim that says Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha salla qama ala asabi'a rijlayh hatta tawarramat This is uh, in the footnote When Rasulullah was praying not wajib prayer Perhaps, uh, maybe like Salatul Layl, or maybe he was reciting Quran. But the, this hadith says, Qama ala asabi He used to stand on the toes of his feet, hatta tawarramat, to the extent that they were like a swallow. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى طَاهَا مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لَتَشْقَى As you know. So, why Rasulullah is so conscious and concerned and preparing himself and we are relaxed for Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. Imam Khomeini refers to some passages from sentences from Dua Al-Kumayl. We are not able to cope with the pain and suffering of that world. That is something that even even a sky and the earth cannot cope with. We have to prepare ourselves for this journey as we have in Hadith Tajahazu, prepare yourself. Why? Because declaration or the call for departure has already been made. Faqad nudiya fikum rahil Then he mentions something that we have in some du'as that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tajafi and darul al to be able to distance ourselves 
to be able to be not attached to this world of deception and be ready for our journey okay alhamdulillah we finished this uh, hadith hadith number 10 and i think i don't start the next hadith because i have already spoken uh, maybe more than i wanted but at the end we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us serious listeners serious readers so that when we read these things or hear these things we really open our ear and mind and heart to these things and inshallah benefit from them may allah inshallah awake in us and help us to prepare ourselves for this journey and every person who prepares himself or herself would also help other people would be a reminder also for other people as well alhamdulillah rabbil alam